it's a real pleasure to be here and I must admit it was uh, not so easy to include Verona between Astana, Kazakhstan and uh, Cape Town, South Africa. And somehow Alitalia put me on standby yesterday. But in the end, everything is fine. I'm here. And I'm delighted to be here. And let me go straight in through a challenge to you. What is the most abundant energy you see in this picture? Everyone says the sun. I'm sorry, it's not. It's the force of gravity. Because the force of gravity of every tree that weighs nearly a ton generates piezoelectricity into the soil that energizes the bottom of the earth. How come we don't see it? Our scientists know it. My organization has established over the past 20 years more than 200 projects. We have raised more than five billion dollars and we generated three million jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not get distracted. It's possible to do it. But you need inspiration. You need people who inspire you. As we say, you need to be able to stand on the shoulders of people who are extraordinary. And you may recognize some Italians in there. I am today who I am because I was able to work in my very early career with Dr. Aurelio Pecei, founder of the Club of Rome. And thanks to Aurelio Pecei, I learned to know two grand Umbertos, Umberto Agnelli and Umberto Colombo. And I had the privilege of working both of them, one very strategic in the thinking of science and the other one very strategic in investing in new areas of the business. I hope the Italians don't forget Umberto Colombo and Umberto Agnelli. Today, I'm very pleased to serve on the international board of Slow Food with Carlo Petrini, and I'm very honored to be chairman of the board of Novamont, the leading green chemistry company, I think, in the world, and it is Italian, and it's based in Novara. I have worked for more than 40 years inside the Club of Rome. And the Club of Rome had these incredible reports called Limits to Growth. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go beyond the limits. We don't have to be reminded that this earth has limits. We know it. We don't have to be reminded we've gone beyond the limits. We know it. It's about time we start thinking very creative, innovative, and positive, and transform society. And the transformation of society will require science in the first place. I'm very fortunate that my organization has about 3,000 scientists. We call them the think tank. But that's not enough. We need entrepreneurs. Second, my organization, which is a network of 38 organizations around the world, we have created the Do Tank, thinking and doing under one platform, in order to transform. And the transformation is the focus on generating value. If you are not generating value, you are not innovating. But we need an innovation that is disruptive. We can't just change things on the fringes. We really have to have surprising breakthrough effects. Enough for the introduction. Let's go into the concrete stuff. Here we are in Patagonia, Argentina. President Mauricio Macri asked me to identify 10 new sectors for the Argentinian economy. And when I see this picture, and when you see this picture, what business opportunity do you see? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I only have 15 minutes. 
in this forest of Patagonia, you have the richest biodiversity of yeast. Levieto. Levieto. That is what you have in there. Now, who needs it? Well, you need it for beer, for wine, for cheese, for yogurt. You need it for your bread. Today, 80% of the market of yeast is dominated by three companies in the world. I'm an entrepreneur. If there are three companies dominating, I can break in. Easy. We're launching a company in Argentina that will have a thousand wild yeasts available from the national parks. Our first customer is Heineken. And Heineken started an advertising campaign with wild yeast. Next year, we're launching in the United States in Colorado with 65,000 microbreweries, the wild yeast market from Patagonia. This is business development. Use the biodiversity that is there. And how do we develop it? We need to go fast and we need to go to scale. So we organize in Argentina now for the children in Argentina, we organize yeast safari. We go out catching yeast and we're going to register it and we're not going to develop little businesses with it. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know how to catch yeast? Then you will not do the business. But once you know how it works, you develop the business. Yeast is in every home, in every product that we consume every day. It is a stable business. It's a low-risk business. And if you can do it with wild yeast, the audience, the public, the consumer goes with you. Our main philosophy within my organization is not to have critique of what doesn't work. Our main message is to be positive. So when we see this kind of ships, including from Italian cruise companies, we ask ourselves, can't they do better? And they claim they cannot and they do the best. But here is my ship. We invested 20 million euro in the creation of a ship that has 500 square meters of solar panels. We convert the solar energy, seawater, into hydrogen and we powered the boat with hydrogen. Ladies and gentlemen, we went around the world faster than Mr. Picard went with a solar plane. You remember the hare and the tortoise. I'm the tortoise. What is important is that this boat is a reality. We're now doing our second tour around the world and we demonstrate that if we have seawater, and solar energy, you have propulsion of a 36 meter trimaran, and we have drinking water for 70 people on the sea. And our supplemental power is the kite, which thanks to the laws of physics, at 200 meters high, makes this movement, and we're generating electric power. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do. Don't discuss it, do it. Le mal de l'Europe, if I may say it in French, is we study everything. We do feasibility studies. We have commissions to analyze. We write business plans. We do a lot of studies and analysis. And in the end, we do very little. Our boat is arriving next month in Lima. And we organize heads of government meeting on the boat. Because once the president of Peru and the president of Ecuador is on the boat, and they see that it's possible with sun to turn sea into hydrogen and in water, you have a strategy for coastal towns developed. As you know, it's Chinese New Year. Let's celebrate with Mayali. Let's celebrate with the pigs. But how? Well, with chickens. In Europe, we need to urgently rethink agriculture. So we have initiated, already 25 years ago, in Bavaria, in Germany, a new initiative with Karl Ludwig Schweizfurt, the former owner of Hertha, the largest sausage maker of Europe. This is how we today create the best chickens and the best pork. 
We have to look at efficiency, and I love artificial intelligence. I love genetics. I love all the sciences. But do you know what we need to do if you want to have very efficient raising of pigs? You need to teach the pig to go to the toilet. Because once the pig goes to the toilet, and it takes only three days to teach the pig to go to the toilet, you have reduced 60% of your maintenance costs. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be practical. Let's have some behavioral sciences of pigs. We've done it in China. We now have millions of piggeries, and this is the first one in Europe where the pigs go to the toilet. I have no time to explain you how it works, <laughs> but over lunch, if you like to. But we have a second element. The pig lives uh, one year, not six months. Because if the pig is let to live for one year, the pig has more omega-3 than salmon from Norway. With other words, I can sell my pork meat at the same price as salmon from Norway. That is innovation in business models, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we need to think. Why do you want to sell pork by the kilo? If there's nothing in there, I agree. But if you have an incidence of omega-3, which beats salmon, don't sell per kilo. This is also innovation. This is our farm in Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like a castle. Cash flow is great, risks are low, demand tremendous. We cannot follow demand. Because people in Europe do like to eat good food. We appreciate. And we are aware that nutrition is more important than kilos. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever I do, we translate everything into a children's story. Favula. Children's stories. Because if we're not preparing the next generation for this kind of thinking, forget about the business models long term. Let's go to one of our largest initiatives today, regeneration of forests of the sea. We have been planting trees for decades, but the global coverage of trees continues to go down. We have initiated planting seaweed. Seaweeds grows very fast and has a solid science. Science magazine dedicated a full issue in 2012. Half of the scientists in that special edition are part of our network. So we initiated seaweed farming programs all around the world. But the surprise is America. With 100% of all energy of the United States, you need 650,000 square kilometers of seaweed to be farmed. 20 years ago, I initiated with Eni Ricerca, research on seaweed. They haven't translated it in a business yet. I hope they will do soon. The United States has 11.3 million square kilometers of territorial seas, meaning that with only half a percent of the territorial seas of America, we have a 100% supply of energy for America. And America has invested 4 million square kilometers in farmland. Ladies and gentlemen, one-fifth of the present farmland of America in territorial sea gives 100% of the energy America needs. Zero emissions. Now, you may say, great idea. Yes. This is our installation in South Africa. We are doing it in South Africa, Indonesia, and Argentina. And let's look at the cost structure. If you're short of gas, like Argentina, Indonesia, and many other countries, and if you don't want to depend on Russia too much, you better get your own gas. At what cost? Today, the main gas source alternative is shale gas and the costs we know. It's the equivalent of 45 to 50 dollars a barrel. Seaweed, today proven, we are at a third of the cost of shale gas. 
And once we go to scale, we will be eight times cheaper. We prognose that shale gas will be beaten by seaweed gas, since seaweed can be produced for eight to ten dollars a barrel. And whose attention did it catch? This guy. I'm sorry, you're reading his Twitters. You should not be reading his Twitters. You should be reading the decisions he makes because President Trump has decided that 10% of American fuel will become fuel from seaweed. And no one noticed because we're too busy reading Twitters. Hawaii will be the center of seaweed production and the Department of Energy has released the first $50 million contracts to prepare production. How come Europe didn't see it? You, Italy, you have an enormous tradition in seaweeds, and hence, you're not developing it into a business. Let's move. Quickly, big data. I'm always amazed how Europe follows the whole debate on big data. Let me enter immediately with our solution. Every light, every street light, will be converted into the capacity of transmission of data that equals a satellite. Yes, you heard it. Every light is a satellite. Why? Because of the new data transmission technology that was made possible thanks to Shuji Nakamura, the Nobel laureate of physics, 2014, the man who invented the lead lamp. What is happening? All our science is focused on recreating light in a darkness like here as if it is day. You know, our pupil goes small. We have five million cones to be able to see. But when it's dark, our pupil opens and we have 120 million rods to see in the dark. Guzzini and others had it wrong. Sorry. Because we try to recreate daylight in the dark. Our body wants to see in the dark. And this technology has transformed in a complete new approach to light. This screen that you see today, right here in front, can be converted in a 250 gigabit per second data transmission screen, thanks to the lead lines behind it. The leading country in this research is France. And Emmanuel Macron is leading it and has become a patron of the initiative. I'll just give you quickly a picture. This is new lead lamps with data transmission. And on the other hand, you have the traditional lead lamps. There's a revolution coming because we're going to have a data transmission system that outcompetes Wi-Fi and 5G. 5G would give us one gig per second. Ladies and gentlemen, today with light, we are at 252 gigs per second. I'm sorry if you invested in 5G. The new standard is Li-Fi. This is the kind of revolution we have because there are 14 billion streetlights in the world. But our first initiative is in Paris, in the Metro de Paris. The Metro of Paris signed an agreement for all metro stations to be converted to internet based on LED lamps. Why? Because Wi-Fi doesn't work in the Metro. Our first application is for the visually impaired, blind people will be able to have mobility in the metro thanks to their cell phone and three LED lamps. I don't have time to go into the details and explain how it works, but it is working. Can you imagine light helps the visually impaired to be guided through the metro? And your telephone today already has all the hardware. The street lights, ANAS, Anas, your Anas company that has invested so much in the streetlights could become the backbone of the internet because we can do light transmission. Zero radio waves, 80% energy savings, 200 times speed. Ladies and gentlemen, 
let's put this in perspective. We are increasing transmission speed by factor 200 and we're saving 80% energy. Do we have a business model? I think we have a business model. And this is what we need. Why spend cash on data transmission that is and slow and very expensive in energy? We launched last week in Paris the My Li Fi, the new system where you have light in your office, in your home, and no more Cisco routers. They're gone. Final case, ladies and gentlemen, if you bear with me. I am the chairman of Novamont, and we do confirm thistles. Thistles, cardo. Questo che è cardo, eh? This is a wheat. We convert wheat into polymers. We work with Lavazza to concrete to make the pots for the coffee. We are making lubricants, but Novamont, Italian company, Italian research, is the only one today in Europe that has a substitute for glyphosates made from Cardo. This, today, this year, we hope to have another 40% growth in our company. And you know what? On the cardo, there grows a little dust, and that little dust is a bacterial enzyme, and with that, we can make goat cheese. This is integrated business model. This is sustainability. And we're very proud that in cooperation with ENI, we've been able to convert a part of Porta Torres, the old cracker of Porta Torres from 1962, in the basis for the conversion of the petrochemical industry to the bio industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Italia. This is you. We have already converted four old factories into production units. There are many more to go. To conclude, my time is up. I'm very privileged, ladies and gentlemen, that the Chinese government has decided that every single story I write about these innovations and these translations into concrete initiatives is obligatory reading material for all children in China. Thank you.